Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In today's video I will show you what I usually do to prepare for flying a new aircraft in Flight Simulator. Just a few days ago the uh, Cessna Citation Mustang has been released from Coxpur and I am about to learn to fly it in the simulator. So in this video I will show you a couple of uh, tips and tricks of what I usually do in order to learn a new airplane. Now, many of you will think, all right, so just hop in and try to get it working, right? Well, not quite, but I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks how you can get it to work. Let's call it fairly quickly. Of course, there is no way around this. The product manual. Of course, huh? this had to happen. But I'm sorry, guys, there really is no way around the product manual. Of course, you can use YouTube videos, but uh, let's be totally honest. You do want to have a look, at least a small, quick look into the product manual in order to uh, get to know if something you are about to do really is right or is not. So, my personal recommendation, pretty much any flight sim add-on at the moment comes with a manual in PDF format and I usually send those to my tablets so that I can have them in front of my computer screen while I'm working on the computer screen and don't have to split my screen all the time like I have to do right now for uh, the video. Now, quick look into the content over here. We have some normal procedures. We have a couple of um, chapters about the systems and we have a cockpit familiarization over there. So. Let's start with the cockpit familiarization, shall we? Now, going down here in the manual, basically what this is about gives us a general overview of um, where everything is. But if I'm totally honest with you, I usually don't spend too much time watching this because I know that I might as well just about head into the flight deck and have a look around. So. That said, let's uh, do just that and head over into the flight deck of our shiny new Citation Mustang. And here we are. So, as you can see, three big screens, standby instruments, autopilot, where we would expect to find it, and then we have a lot of system switches down here. Now, quick look at them actually reveals that it's not as complicated as it looks initially. Basically, have a power, avionics, bit of fuel, ice protection, lights, and then we have environmental controls. So that is kind of easy to remember. Now, remembering the uh, position of every single switch does take a little while, but personally I have developed a habit that I'm just going to uh, go through the safety inspection, the cockpit preparation, and the cockpit inspection, and that usually gets me familiar with the um, location of each switch fairly quickly. It does happen occasionally that I struggle to find one, but then again, that's why we have the uh, product manual, don't we? So, talking about the product manual, I'm afraid that's already the next moment to get it back out, because now that um, we are t have taken a look around the airplane, let's actually have a look into how to fly it. We have a huge um, amount of the manual here dedicated to normal procedures and important notice usually is important so let's start with that not using the proper normal procedures and starting the aircraft from cold and dark can have inconsistent consequences please do not use start from runway or in the air always use start from apron okay we're going to remember that so no simple loading up of the plane on the runway but we'll have to start from the apron on Let's go ahead then. Preliminary exterior inspection. Battery connected. Okay. Uh, engine covers removed. Peter covers removed. Static wick covers removed. And ground power unit not connected. Okay, so if we have a look around, there, there's nothing connected here. I can't see any of those red removed before flight flags. And there definitely is no ground power at the moment as well. Alright, fine. So, back into our flight deck. Then we have the cockpit and cabin inspection so this is mostly uh, stuff you have to check in real life that um, all the documents and everything are on board 
So for us, it starts getting interesting really over here. Gust lock, I don't think that one is uh, simulated. So, okay. Not a problem. Then circuit breakers in, landing gear handle down. Anti skid switch on. Alright, that is off, so gotta turn that on. And all other switches off or normal. Okay, so I'm quickly going over all other switches here. Looks like. Whoever flew this plane last left it in a little bit of a messy configuration. So I'm just about um fix that. Alright, so everything else is off in here. Then elevator trim checked and set for takeoff. Okay, so this is definitely moving, and I'm just going to leave it around about in the middle position. Emergency gear release, cover installed. I think that's no, that's the emergency brake. It's somewhere down here. Then park and brake set. That's down here and it's set. Um, Peter's text which is on 30 seconds then off. Okay, that is basically all for external um, inspection. So basically you make sure the things light up and warm up and everything. So nothing really we can check. Pack safety switches off. Landing gear. Uh, should have three greens. At which point? It just that battery connected here. Oh, doesn't matter then, I'm just gonna switch it on. So we do have three greens. Other external lights, which is on check illumination, flap handle check operation, and same for the trim. Okay, so this works, and I'm not gonna touch the trim because I don't like how that works out. Okay, then let's go ahead with the cockpit preparation. That is the next really important thing here. Um, because this is what you are about to do on every single flight once you have the airplane up and running. So, what I usually tend to do, those manuals can be a little bit messy at times. So what I usually do is that I use the manual to determine the position that each switch should be in. And then I build myself a logical flow through the cockpit that I'm from then on using in order to check the position of each switch. That is exactly what uh, we do in the 737 as well, by the way. So the uh, flows are given in a logical order by Boeing. Unfortunately, I don't always have the impression that that is the case on Flight Simulator add-on manuals. So might just about help to create your own flow here. So let's go over this. Um, oxygen control switch, normal, that's over here. Then we have the generator switches into the gen position. Ignition switch is normal, those are down here. So we're jumping from here to here. Then uh, fuel boost switch is normal, jumping up here, see that is what I meant. Fuel transfer knob off, pilot mic switch on headset, ice protection switch is off. Then landing gear handle down, any skid switch on, pack safety switch off, external light switch is as required, so all off for now. And cockpit cabin temperature knobs as desired, air source knob both. Press con switch normal, cabin dump switch normal, co-pilot mic switch on headset. And uh, ELT arm that's down here. And finally we have our ox oxygen supply push in, throttles cut off. Engine sync switch normal, I think that's hidden somewhere down here. No, it's not. Okay. At least it used to be here in the uh, Flight 1 citation, anyway. And um, then we go on. Battery switch to battery, standby instruments off, park and brake set, landing gear, three greens. Cockpit lighting as required, avionic power switch on. We turn that one on. Database chart currency check, so we have navigation data that is uh, still valid for another two days. Fuel quantity and balance check, so, and it is clearance as required. And that basically completes the uh, flight deck setup. Alright, so we've had quite a bit of stuff here now in the flight deck that we had to check. And you can see how the manual basically jumped around in the cockpit all the time. So the next thing that I would do is to build myself that flow. So that's the oxygen control valve and normal. Then basically I would go 
over the panel like this. And just remember, okay, switch those on, on, off, normal, headset, off. Then I go back down. Not illuminated, normal, off, middle, off. Down, on, all off, all normal, off, and so on. So that's how I will just build myself that flow. And then I'm going to practice that flow like two or three times. When I'm done with it, things are going to go really, really quick. And that is basically the first lesson and the first thing that I always do when I hop into a new airplane. So in order to practice this, let me go and restart flight. I'll let the simulator restart itself or let the simulator restart the flight. Takes a short while. And here we are, ready to fly. Right, so let's do the same thing. They said remove everything externally. You can check that on here. So there is nothing connected. And now we go down here. That's a normal. Then on, 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 off, normal, normal, headset, off. Off, normal, normal, off, middle, off. Oops. Landing gear down. Anti-skid on. Lights all off. Everything in the middle. And off, middle, normal, normal. ELT armed and oxygen supply on. Navigation data is up to date. Fuel is on board and balanced. Alright, perfect. And that is basically my own flow from which I'm going to uh, do the cockpit inspection in the future. So, I do that like two or three times, and then I definitely know what I'm about to do. And that is the first part how I am learning the cockpit inspection. Now let's go ahead and uh, deal with the engine startup. So we have the before engine start procedure, which is pre-flight inspection complete, done that. Wheel trucks removed, cabin door closed. Let's quickly check for that. Yep, the door is definitely closed. Then passenger briefing complete, seats and seatbelts adjusted secure, external light switches as required, so we're about to start an engine. Let's turn the beacon light on, and the nav light as well. Then air conditioning switch is off. That is off. Cockpit and cabin fan knobs off. Okay, those don't have a click spot, so I can't turn them off over here, but would be those two. I'm just going to remember that in case it gets added in the future. Then ICAS checked. We have only b 2 e off here, which is expected. And battery volts checked. That's 25.2 volts at the moment. Okay, so remember over here from the whole procedure, basically everything we have to do is to switch on the lights and make sure the air conditioning switches off. So then again, fairly easy preparing for the engine startup what I'm remembering for myself here beacon on and air conditioning off which is off anyway because we checked it in the procedure before next up then starting engines so that one's always worth reading ahead because things are going to go quickly then we say engine start button press and illuminated throttles idle engine instruments monitor n1 abort if no n1 by 40 percent n2 all right remember that rtt check for rise all pressure steady increase engine stable within 45 seconds okay and the most important of those are actually listed here on the checklist as well so do not exceed 830 degrees rtt for more than five seconds Operating engine N2 increased to 10% above idle, other engine start, oxygen supply and all pushed in. Okay, so that is basically the starting engine procedure. So once again, I remember, okay, throttle um, engine start button pressed, that's the one down here. Throttle idle, and then abort if no N1 by 40% N2, check for steady increase, and engine has to be stable within 45 seconds. And when that is complete, increase N2 55%, then start the other engine. Make sure the generators are on, avionic power on, and check the DC amperage and volts. So, fairly easy procedure once again. Let's go ahead and do that.
low volt indication. Okay, so let's get that engine started. You'll take the right engine. Start her on, throttle idle. Watch for the increase. We should also have a timer running, by the way. So oil pressure is rising. Ignition. ITT is rising. So we do have N1, so the abort condition is not met. And the engine is pretty much stable, 45 seconds, perfect. So reset the timer, increase thrust 55%, and 2 so that's the one down here. And here we go, 55%, let's start the other engine. So press the starter, throttle on, start timing. And here we go, N2. Oil pressure is rising. N1, already at 15%, so the abort condition is no longer met. Okay, engine is pretty much stable, around 45 seconds. So then, generator switch is on, avionic power switch, check on, and DC amps volts, and check it down here. Checked, I'll go back to idle, and that is the uh, starting engine's procedure complete. So, now, let's do the whole thing once again. And uh, this time we should get to engine start pretty quickly, since we already have a good idea of what we are about to do. I'll give it a short while, the sounds indicate that uh, from the restart it still have the engines running, those are shutting down right now. So let's give it a short while. Alright. So once more, oxygen control valve normal, battery and generators on, avionics power on, fuel booster normal, microphone headset, anti-ice off, starters disengaged, ignition normal, fuel transfer off, FedEx in the center position, windshield heat and stall warning. Rough, landing gear down, anti-skid is on. Then we have the lights off. For our environmental control we have everything in the middle on both. And air conditioning off, fans, well, should be off, aren't simulated. And the pressurization is both on normal, ELT armed and oxygen supply in. And parking brake set, flap lever moves. And that is pretty much the setup complete. Then, navigation data is current, fuel is loaded, and in the uh, and balanced voltage 25.3, that is fine for me. Alright, then let's go ahead and uh, start our engines once again. So we turn the beacon on. I'll put the NAV light on as well, air conditioning switch is off, and battery voltage is checked. So, start right engine. And the timer. And 2 All pressure is coming. And one is rotating.
The engine is starting up nicely, as we can see. Right, that looks about stable to me. Then we need an N2 of at least 55%. Which we have now. So, start the other engine. Starter. Thrust lever. And the timer. N2. All pressure starts to rise. And one is rotating. And the left engine is also starting up nicely. Forty-five seconds, engine is stable. We'll go back to idle with number two. Then we have the generator switches on, avionic power on, and DCM's valves checked. And that is the starting engine's procedure complete. Alright, so, for this first video I'm going to leave it at this. As you can see, it really helps to uh, first of all have a look around the flight deck, find out where everything is, then use the uh, product manual to figure out the position in, we, in uh, which each switch is supposed to be, and when that is done, then build yourself a logical flow on that panel. And that will help you to do your prefab procedure pretty quickly, as you can see. And from there on, just repeat that once or twice in order to get familiar with the procedure that you have uh, just learned. And then move on to the next one, like the before start and the engine start procedure. And as you can see, in the end it took me, like what, 10 seconds? If I wanted to, do, to go really fast. So... That is pretty much the lesson that I uh, would like to see learned for this first video. I would like to thank you for watching, hope that you have enjoyed this one, and you can use this procedure with pretty much any aircraft, not only with the Citation Mustang. So go out, start learning your aircraft, and if you want to support the channel, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I know that at least 50% of my viewers are currently not subscribed so if you do want to get up to date on my content then make sure to hit that button and also hit the bell in order to get a notification each time I load up a new video. If you really want to support the channel there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description below and as always I would be very grateful for your donations and for your support and if you do want to become a permanent supporter there is also a patreon link down there. Thank you very much for watching and now Head out to your aircraft and start learning.